So I'm back in the studio today with Lee Scott from the Starag Group. Now, one of the sectors that they um, they sell and supply a lot of equipment and solutions to is the transport and industrial sector. Now, we're doing a series of short movies all about this sector and the certain uh, areas within it. Today, we're talking about electric vehicles. Um, Lee, this is uh, a, a good area of the sector for you guys, isn't it? What's involved in the manufacturing of parts for electric vehicles? Well, it's a growing area because the, the transition from a combustion engine car to an electrically driven car or, or vehicle, generally. So it, it's, it's a range of parts for us. On the, on the small end, it's the... Uh, it's the drive systems for the, for the electric units. And then on the larger end, it's, it's the actual battery container systems, uh, which are the full length of the car. And if you took a comparison bet between the old traditional combustion engine and what is now um, needed for an electric vehicle, is, are the volumes going to be similar? Um, uh, do the parts differ a lot? And if so, you know, how? Well, if you jump in your car... Uh, assuming you drive an automatic anyway, you, you don't really know the difference between an electric and a combustion engine. The car itself is the same, but of course, underneath the bonnet, underneath the chassis, the, the, the components are completely different. So in terms of volume and sales, um, you know, the same amount of cars will be sold in the market, but of course, there'll be less, there'll be less uh, petrol and diesel engine cars and there'll be more electric or more hydro, hybrid cars in the future. So there is a switch and, and, and um, yeah, volumes are increasing for sure in electric vehicles. And I suppose when those lines cross, there'll be manufacturers that are using some typical kind of automotive machinery at the moment that may have to change them because I'm assuming the machines will be different because there'll be different materials, different sizes, different applications. If so, how and, and what? Well, the, the, yeah, the parts are different because you, you, you've lost your engine and you've got a completely different drive system. So for us, we're, we're, we're making uh, predominantly aluminium parts, so small accumulator type housings, mo motor parts for the, for, the, for the small drive units. And as I said earlier, l larger parts for, for housing the batteries, which again, you wouldn't need in a combustion engine car. And what sort of machines then would you be supplying into this sector? Well, predominantly on the small end, the, the, the machines would come from Hecate, the compact range, as, as we've discussed previously. So um, four or five axis, uh, very high speed pr prismatic machines. Um, and then for the larger parts, um, uh, the Drupal Ryan FOGS machine is being used in the industry. And we, we've incorporated uh, a process called uh, friction, friction stir welding. Um, and, how, and, and where would you use that? You use that in, in the assembly of a battery, uh, a battery housing, if you like. Uh, the fabricated parts come together, and, and we use um, uh, friction stir welding to, to bond the, the parts together, and then we machine them at the same time, so a finished part comes off, so they're not going through multiple processes. And, and your machines, typically, we talk about uh, their capabilities, the, the precision, um, you know, automation, some of, the, some of these areas, unmanned running, speed. What of those or which of those apply to electric vehicles and the parts that you mentioned, or is it all of them? I'd say all of them because, you know, we're, we're talking automotive, so we're talking high volume. So um, or, almost all of these applications in some way require some kind of automation. So as a minimum, we start with two pallets, but usually we, we, we have a loading system, whether that's a pallet loading system, robots loading system, an overhead gantry system where we, where we negate the second pallet. There's a, there's a number of different ways that we can automate the process. But you're right, it's not just about fast machining, it's about the whole process.